The base model Mac Mini is $599. The plus side to that low price is the new M2 chip with 8-core CPU, 10-core GPU, and 8 gigabytes of RAM. And that 8 gigabytes of RAM is not much, but for light editing and exports, you should do just fine. And for someone looking to get into media creation, this would be an excellent computer to start with. So let's check out if this is good for editing, and later we will put this up against an M1 Max chip from last year that is still selling on the market for three grand, so you're gonna see where your money goes. Chapters are down below in the description if you wanna just jump ahead to the speed test. So let's crack this open and see what we got inside. All right, here's the M2 Mac Mini. Ford, no stickers. Uh, one, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> one big silver sticker, that's nice. That's a keeper. So you get a nice price with these new Mac Minis having the M2 chips in them, which is pretty much like having an M2 Air in this nice little silver box. You have to bring your own screen to these new Minis, but now you have the ability to power dual displays at once. Some will have different refresh rates, but dual screen is very nice. I'll flash up on the screen how you can get dual display out of this. You're going to be using either your HDMI or a Thunderbolt port. So setting up these screens is going to take a lot of your ports right off the bat, and that's where I see video editing pitfalls starting to begin with this. I would definitely say get a hub. We're going to use the Bridgeport Pro hub. There's also a really nice hub that fits underneath the Mini, gives you some ports on the front. There is also no SD card reader on this Mini, so make sure your hub or your dongle has one of those as well. There's a gigabit Ethernet port, and these are also equipped with the new Wi-Fi 6E, if you have a Wi-Fi 6E compatible router. So if you are all set, you are going to get some amazing internet speeds out of this thing. So here is another pitfall with these base model minis. The prices and the accessories really start to add up. So you have to get a screen, preferably with a webcam, or you can use your iPhone 13 or 14 with the continuity camera and probably a hub. And next is the keyboard and the mouse. I personally like that smart keyboard with the Touch ID, and that has been a game changer with all these hundreds of passwords that we have now. I also love just coming in and turning on my computer with my fingerprint, very futuristic. Storage on this base model is also gonna be limiting. It's only 256 gigs that it comes with. So another thing you're gonna have to buy is an external hard drive. And I have really been loving these fast Samsung SSDs. You can find them on sale all the time, sometimes for half off. And this is an easy way to save yourself some money on storage. Just always have one of these plugged in and you have one, two, four terabytes extra. Personally, I find having the minimum one terabyte for a video editing machine fits my needs, but that is gonna tack on another 400 bucks with this. So that's how they get you. All right, we have everything we need to start editing. Let's get this plugged in do some speed tests on Premiere, After Effects, and also DaVinci Resolve. Okay, we got the Mac Mini set up on the left with the studio display, looking pretty good. On the right is a 14 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro from last year. It is loaded with 64 gigabytes of RAM as opposed to the Mac Mini, which has eight gigabytes of RAM, so we're probably going to see a pretty big difference in export render times, but I'm hoping with this new media engine that the Mac Mini is packing, we'll at least see some good gains, and I have high hopes for this little guy, and this $599 price point is really great for people who want to get into editing. Let's get it started with a quick time export. I've got a 4K MPEG-4. We're just going to take this 4K clip and see how long QuickTime Player takes to export that into 1080p.
So not too bad, not too bad with that. The M1 Max exported that in 25 seconds and the Mac Mini spit it out at 34 seconds. And there was something glitchy going on if you couldn't see, I'm not sure what was going on with that. Let's open up an Adobe Premiere Pro session. This is just another one of my videos from a few months ago and we'll do some playback tests and some export tests. So playback is looking pretty good on the Mac Mini. This is 4K footage. Oh, maybe there's a little motion blur happening. So let's render these. We'll see how long that takes and then we will export them in H.264 and ProRes. Okay, so we finished rendering and the Mac Mini took about an extra minute and 20 seconds compared to 52 seconds on the M1 Max. But we all know that rendering your in and out points aren't a huge deal, so let's do some exports now. Let's go first with ProRes 422. Okay, the Mac Mini just finished up, about uh, another minute and a half longer, which is still pretty impressive for it only having 8 gigs of RAM compared to 64 gigs on the Max, and the price difference between the two, I and mean, this is pretty insane, so we can definitely see the M2 chip has some speed and power, and if you could beef this up with a bunch of RAM like you can on the Pro and the M2 Max, wow. It's going to be crazy speed. So let's export this session now, offline media and all, in H.264, and we'll use our favorite YouTube 4K preset. Okay, the Mac Mini just finished up in pretty consistent numbers with the H.264 codec. It's about two, two and a half times slower than the M1 Max, but the M1 Max is quadruple the price of the Mac Mini. Uh, granted, you're getting screen, keyboard, ports, all that stuff, but still pretty good processing power. So let's fire up After Effects. We're going to drop in a template from Motion Array. If you haven't checked out Motion Array, I've got a link below. And I will also post the template URL. So if you are a Motion Array member, you can go check it out, download it, and uh, play along. Put your machine up against these two Macs and see how you're doing over there. So let's fire up After Effects now. Also, you can see that just loading these up, the programs fire up at the same speed. Everything opens up right away. So this template is called Odyssey, and I just pulled one of the chunks from it. It's a pretty large sequence. When pressing play, the Mac Mini definitely is able to keep up. So we're just jumping into exports now. This is QuickTime ProRes 422. It 
Before I ran all these tests, I just wanted to test them out pound for pound. And you can see on the max, I put the amount of RAM down to six gigabytes. And that's the exact amount that the mini has. Let's kick the max up to 60 gigabytes of RAM and we're gonna re-export this and we'll see if it even catches up. Okay, now you can really see where the extra RAM comes in. Now the M1 Max is just flying through this export. Okay, the Max just finished up again and you saw where that extra RAM goes. It was doing three concurrent frames. Gosh, it was up in the one to two frames per second that it was doing, so that's where your money goes on this RAM. Definitely is worth it when you are doing lots of exports and renders. It all adds up. After a year of using After Effects, it turns into an insane amount of your quality of lifetime. Let's put the Mac Mini out of its misery right now. Let's stop this and jump into DaVinci Resolve. Okay, we are exporting that 4K clip again in DaVinci. And you can see here it's doing pretty good, H.264. So not too much longer, that was 5 seconds compared to 17 seconds. Let's try a ProRes export and see if it does any better. ProRes export on the Mini took about 20 seconds longer, so pretty consistent. Yep, this is what we're seeing across the board with the Adobe stuff and with DaVinci. Two to three times longer for exports, but if you're just getting your feet wet with this stuff, with video editing and creating, you're not going to have these crazy timelines, and I think this Mac Mini would be a great start to get your feet wet. One other thing I want to test out is Apple is saying you can play 12 4K clips at the same time in a timeline. They're probably talking about Final Cut Pro, but let's check out Premiere and see if we can play 12 clips at 4K all at once. All right, here we go. 12 4K clips all stacked on top of each other. And the Mac Mini base model, 600 bucks, can do that. It's looking pretty smooth. Crazy. It's a little choppy. You can kind of see a little difference up close, but not much. That's awesome. 
So very impressive numbers with what we saw with this Mac Mini, but it's kind of what we figured was going to happen when you put it up against a machine that's four or five times more expensive and has way more RAM. But this little Mac Mini definitely kept up with its eight gigabytes of RAM, so you can just imagine what loading this up with 24 gigs is going to do for your speed. And we also have the Mac Mini Pro coming in a couple days, so we're going to put that up against this. So I'm sure we're going to see it do really well and maybe even take out the M1 Max behind me. So very exciting stuff. If you just need a nice entry-level Mac, this is the one. It's a nice price. We'll definitely keep up with everything, web surfing, some gaming, light editing. I know we want it all for nothing, but this is a good entry point for Apple. So thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you learned a little something, got your eyeballs on this a little more. Definitely hit me up in the comments if you got any other questions. And definitely subscribe so you can see that Mac Mini Pro go up against this base model. So thank you for watching everyone. I'll see you at the next one. Take care.